Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. I hope you are all doing okay out there right now. And today I have a really interesting video for you, especially all you small form factor fans, because I'm doing a bit of extra testing following on from my previous group test of slim 120 millimeter fans, like this one from Scythe. And um, basically it's a lot, of, a lot of you have actually requested this extra bit of testing because you want to see how each of the nine slim 120 millimeter fans I tested actually performs in terms of airflow at a specific noise level. So you're basically asking for noise normalized testing. So setting each fan, for example, to uh, say 36 or 40, 40 decibels or something like that, equivalent to how the fans might be operating at idle in your PC or versus a slightly faster speed, you want to know what airflow you'll be getting at that speed and how each fan compares against other ones when the noise levels are the same. So that's basically what noise normalized testing means. So that's what we'll be focusing on today at a couple of noise levels and I'm more than happy to do that for you guys because I know that these fans, especially slim 120 millimeter fans, are such great tools for squeezing a lot of airflow, maybe even water cooling into very, very tight spaces where you might otherwise not be able to, which is really, really cool. So to actually test the vans, I'll be using the same test gear that I used for the group test, and that is a uh, EK 120 millimeter radiator, which um, I'll be strapping the fans onto the front of, and then measuring the airflow coming out the other side of that radiator using the airflow meter here. So that's not just a great way of measuring the airflow, but it's a brilliant way of measuring static pressure as well, because the more airflow, airflow you get out the other side of a radiator, that's basically the higher the static airflow as well because or a great indicator of it because rather than just having the fan blowing straight at the at the airflow meter it's actually having to pass through the radiator first so that's a, it's a slightly more elaborate way of testing fan performance rather than just raw airflow we're actually seeing the the actual airflow performance coming through the radiator and how static pressure might be impacting on that. So that's something that, we, that we'll be focusing on as well. And something I will also address, because there were a couple of people that mentioned it in the comments, they were asking whether I could strap a water cooling loop to this radiator. But the problem with that is, the results that I will get will be highly specific. In fact, too specific to be meaningful at all, really, because there will be purely specific to the fins per inch on this radiator, the thickness of this radiator and the general um, performance of this radiator, not to mention all the other components that would be in that water cooling loop. So there are too many variables there for that, for that to be worthwhile data. Yes, I might see a few degrees difference in CPU temperature or coolant temperature, it's, it's unlikely, but that's not to say that you wouldn't um, in, in your own testing. And I can fine tune the results until I get a, great, uh, a really great difference between the results, but then that's kind of artificially changing things, isn't it? So what we wanna see is which fans offer the best airflow, the lowest for the lowest noise, and which fans are the best value. That, all, of the, all of that kind of stuff I looked at in my previous video, which you can see a link up, to, uh, up in the top there. And um, today though, we're gonna be focusing on noise normalized testing. So basically looking at the airflow that we're getting out the other side of this radiator at a specific noise level or several specific noise levels that I'll be looking at today. So just wanted to clear that one up as to why I didn't actually strap a custom water cooling, water cooling loop to the radiator and it's purely because those results would be just pretty much fixed and specific to this particular setup. And at home you might see a bigger difference or a smaller difference compared to what I'm getting here. Whereas the airflow that you'll be getting from the fans will be the same whether you measure it on my desk here or whether you measure it at home. So that's why it's kind of more, more of a real world test, more of more example of uh, what you will see at home in terms of performance from these fans. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel though and don't forget to turn on notifications when you do if you f and uh, don't, don't forget to like this video as well if you found it informative and please please comment uh, below as well just let me know what you think of the video and uh, what you thought about the testing always keen to hear your uh, your thoughts on the testing and any other future tests you might like to see would you like to see um, how which cases benefit from these fans for example what you can and can't do in in specific cases 
with these slim 120 millimeter fans and don't forget all the comments and the likes they just help with the youtube algorithm and uh, just get me noticed basically which is always handy so without further ado let's move on to the testing Okay, so we're now looking at the first set of results, which is at 44 decibels. And the reason why it's 44 decibels is because the loudest fan on test, I actually forget which one it is now, but reducing that to its minimum speed would only uh, bottom out at 44 decibels. It wouldn't go any further according to my sound meter. So to actually get that into this first set of results, I've had to limit that to 44 decibels. And uh, essentially, what we're looking at here is what your fans would be running at uh, when they are pretty much idle, just ticking over, so they're very, very quiet. Uh, below this, they're barely moving any air at all, and as you can see, my airflow meter was just about registering um, some airflow here. It becomes fairly ungranular, if that's even a word, uh, below about 0.8 meters uh, a second of airflow, so that's why we're seeing here a very, very similar lineup in terms of the results with 0.6 uh, meters a second being what we're seeing from uh, most of the fans on test. So in terms of performance, there's next to nothing. There's next to no difference here between most of the fans, except, of course, if you dip down to the ID cooling and the Silverstone fans, they seem to fall away quite a bit when we reduce the uh, the speeds to match 44 decibels. So here, basically, take your pick, apart from those two fans down the bottom, but obviously the front runners in terms of price and performance elsewhere would be the Arctic P12 Slim, uh, the Noctua NF A12, maybe the Scythe Kaze Flex as well, and to some extent, um, especially when it's based on value, the uh, Gelid Slim 12 UV Blue as well. So stepping up to 49 decibels then, and the reason why I've picked 49 decibels is because this is essentially the loudest that one of the fans would actually go. I, again, I can't actually remember which one. I should have looked this up beforehand, but 49 decibels, um, essentially the loudest that one of the fans would actually go. So this is kind of its full speed. But of course, a lot of the other ones will go uh, louder than this. So what I've done is I've included all fans here. This is the highest, or should I say the loudest reading, where I could include all fans. And as you see, as you'll see at the next sound reading, I've had to cut off a couple of fans that literally wouldn't go any louder, even even at full speed. So if we're noise normalizing, obviously all the not, not all the fans will perform the same, and not all the fans will peak out and bottom out at the same noise level. So um, eventually you'll have to start chopping fans from the list. But here we've got all nine and as we can see the best performing at 49 decibels which is a decent amount of air. It's not, um, it's not full speed for a lot of the fans here but it is a decent amount of air. So if you're wanting to kind of rein in that, that maximum speed then this is kind of a good level to have it at. You're still getting a decent amount of airflow here uh, and nearly double what we were seeing from some of the fans at the uh, basically at the idle setting at 44 decibels. So the Alpha Cool, the SL15, one of the best fans here and the Arctic P P12 Slim as well, uh, the two best performing fans at this sound rating. And now I should say that there is significantly more airflow to be had as we step above this, but in this kind of middling range, um, this is where the Arctic and the Alpha Cool really shine. And they were noticeably better than all the other fans on test. So the Noctua NFA 12 times 15, not at its best at its middle fan range uh, or speed range, should I say, um, when, it, when it needs to hit. 49 decibels to become normalized with all the other fans. Um, the the Gelid still performing reasonably well. Um, it's nowhere near as good as the Arctic or Alpha Cool. And of course, we've got the ID Cooling uh, yet again sitting at the bottom of the graph. Just a, just a really disappointing fan, that one. However, the Silverstone just about made it into the middle of the pack. And uh, of course, it does have limitations elsewhere, which you can read about in my other review. But basically here... If you don't want to run your fans at full speed, you'll be focusing on kind of the uh, the sort of 0.8 to 0.1 airflow in meters a second, and you want to keep everything under 50 decibels, then the Alpha Cool and the Arctic are pretty good. Okay, so the final noise level then, and we are looking at 55 decibels, and again, this is essentially... The, uh, the final reading where I could include most of the fans in the test. However, I've already had to drop two from the stack, the Silverstone and the ID Cooling, because uh, they basically maxed out uh, way below this. So I felt it was important to include 
uh, faster speeds because here there are one or two fans like the Noctua that can actually go a fair amount louder and producing more airflow than this here. But there are a number of fans in the test that either max out here or they're pretty much close to their maximum speed. So this is the last rating and this is pretty much where your fans would be under in gaming situations and under um, short term loads, especially if your system is water cooled. So what you're looking at here is um, kind of the performance area that a lot of us would be most concerned about. So the Noctua NF A12 times 15 offering the best airflow at 55 decibels and close up to that is the Alpha Core SL15 and then followed by the Arctic P12 Slim. Now what I will mention is sound quality. So a lot of you have mentioned that you believe the Noctua has lower sound quality. I think I would probably agree with you there. It it depends on the situation, of course, as to where the fans are placed and what you're actually doing with them. But I would generally agree that the Noctua um, isn't quite up there in terms of noise quality with the Arctic. Um, if you um, obviously that that can be a it can be subjective. So what I suggest you do is check out my other video, my previous one. Uh, which goes into a lot more detail when it goes to when it, in terms of sound quality, and I've got some sound recordings of each fan there, so you can actually compare them uh, side by side uh, through your speakers to see which one you actually prefer. However, even though there was a slight, uh, maybe a slight dip in noise quality, the Noctua was still the only fan to uh, get that top rating in the graph of 1.72 meters a second through the radiator, of course. And you may see other tests out there that just test the fan in isolation, but I think that's that's not really telling you a lot. I like to actually strap the fan to something that's going to give you a real world reading of what the airflow and static pressure will be. And of course, most of us are more concerned about pushing air through radiators or heat sinks and that kind of stuff. And that's where this that's where this testing is very much real world because it's the airflow that we're getting out the other side of the radiator is what I'm actually measuring, not just the raw airflow out the back of the fan because that tends to reward high airflow fans and not necessarily high static pressure fans, which is what we're kind of more focusing on here with the radiator in the way. So the Noctua wins out here then at this um, at this higher noise level and Alphacool and Arctic, as well as the Roswell and Akasa fans putting up a pretty good effort. So if you're pretty keen on getting some uh, good noise quality and uh, of course the Arctic and Alphacool doing really, really well in the previous noise setting as well, the Arctic is probably um, a very, very good option, especially if it costs a fair bit less than the Noctua fan as well. And um, the Gelid, uh, it, again, is another fan that I recommended in the previous video, uh, just purely because it was pretty cheap and still performed quite well. Here you can see it really falls away in terms of noise for cooling, but we kind of knew this from my previous testing as well, that it's it's kind of a, um, a brute force method uh, and the sound quality isn't particularly great, it's very noisy, but it does shift a lot of airflow at full speed, but that's pretty much all it's good for. So again here, pretty disappointing from the Scythe Kaze Flex. It's a great looking fan. It performs reasonably well in terms of airflow at maximum speed, but it is very, very noisy and that is completely reflected in this result here. So um, kind of vindicating my, my findings last time by giving the Scythe a bit of a panning when it comes to operating at full speed because the Noctua um, is way out in front in terms of noise normalization, no, noise normalized performance, and also the Arctic is a much better buy as well. So that's it from me. Um, I hope you found this, this bit of extra testing useful. I know a lot of you were asking for the noise normalized testing, and uh, we've got it here in front of us. I am considering buying a slightly more detailed or granular um, airflow meter, because as you can see here, a lot of the results are the same. Purely because it's not that granular, but as you can see in the graph above, it's very, very obvious which fans are performing better than others. And the differences with the, that, it's, that the airflow meter isn't picking up are likely to be so small they wouldn't amount to any difference in real world performance. So that is something that I'll be looking at doing for future testing. And of course, if more slim fans uh, get released by other companies or companies such as Arctic and Noctua release new ones, I will be testing those. If you do spot slim fans, do let me know uh, that I haven't tested. Um, do let me know and I will try and pick them up and 
speak to the companies involved and get them in for testing. So, and of course, if there's any extra testing you would like me to do as well with this or um, or other things, then uh, do let me know and I'd be happy to carry it out. So thanks for watching. Do leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I will speak to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.